So we are going to talk about the divergence, which is a property of vector fields at every point in the field. The divergence of a vector field f at some point is the limit as a volume approaches 0 of 1 over that volume times the closed surface integral of f dot n ds, where n is oriented outward. We're going to look at a simpler version, which is the two-dimensional case of divergence. In that case, we have the limit in two dimensions rather than volume. We will have area approaching 0 of 1 over that area times the closed line integral of f dot n ds, again with n oriented outward. So we're going to take a look at the two-dimensional case, but all of the steps will generalize to the three-dimensional case as well. To understand what's going on, we need to start from the inside of this expression and work our way out. So we can start with the simplest elements and then slowly get to the full expression. On the inside here, we're looking at the line integral of a closed curve. And if we're trying to find the divergence at some point, some specific point, we define that the closed curve has to go around that point. Now inside here, we're looking at f dot n. n is a unit normal vector, which we know from looking at vector field surface integrals. So at every point along this curve, we can draw a vector pointing outward that is at a 90 degree angle, or normal, to the path of the curve. So this dot product, when we do f dot n, measures the component of our vector field in the direction of that normal vector at a particular point. When we do the integral over an entire closed curve, we're looking at the information of the component of f normal to the curve across the entire curve. Notice that we're taking this integral and doing the limit as the area approaches 0. This area value is the area inside of this curve. Now the reason that we divide by the area here is that as the curve gets smaller, this integral value is going to get smaller as well, because we're integrating over a smaller region. So we divide by the area to take that into account and make sure that we're approaching a finite value. Notice that when we're looking at the closed curve around this point, the normal vector to the right of the point also points to the right. And the normal vector to the left of the point points to the left, since it's always oriented outward. Similarly, on top it would point up, and on the bottom it would point down. Let's think about what the value for this line integral would be if our vector field were a constant. That is, it always gave the same output at every point. In that case, on our closed curve, over here on the right side our normal vector would point right, over here it would point left. If our vector field, say, always points to the right, on the right side over here, when we take the dot product of f dot n, we're going to get a positive value because they point in the same direction. Over here, because they point in the opposite directions, we're going to get a negative value. So when we integrate over the entire curve, we're going to get positive values over here and negative values over here when f is constant. Those two are going to cancel out and we're going to get the result of 0. So when our vector field is constant, this integral is always going to be 0. That means that if we want our divergence to be non-zero, f has to be changing as we move away from this point. In particular, if we want the divergence to be positive, as we move to the right, the vector field also needs to point to the right. And as we move to the left, the vector field also needs to point more to the left. Notice that when we want divergence to be positive, the direction that the vector field is pointing is the same as the direction that we move away from the point. And that comes down to some simple geometry. Let's say that our closed curve is a circle. In that case, the displacement from the point where we're taking the divergence all the way to the point on the curve, that is a radius of the circle. And the normal vector is going to look like this at that point. Notice that the normal vector points in the exact same direction as the radius at every point. And that's why we need the vector field to point in the direction of displacement. Because f needs to be parallel to the normal vector, and the normal vector of a circle is always parallel to the radius. This is also why the expression is called divergence in the first place. When we have a positive divergence, what that means 
is that as we move away from the center point, the vector field starts to point even more away. And when we have negative divergence, as we move away from the point, the vector field starts to point back towards the original point. Now I have a separate video that goes more in depth in the explanation of where the formula for divergence comes from, so you can check the link in the description for that. In this video, we're just going to go through a quick overview of where the formula comes from. Let's say that our vector field f has components p and q. So the x value of the vector field at any point is given by some function p, and the y value is given by q. Let's think about how we can use these two components to get our divergence formula. Remember that we're taking the limit as the area of this circle approaches zero. What that means is that we're going to be looking at very, very small movements away from the point. And when we look at small movements, that means we're probably going to take a look at derivatives. Now to get to a formula for divergence, we have to remember that this point and the closed curve are sitting in the xy plane. What that means is that moving to the right is the same thing as increasing x values, and moving downward, for example, is the same as decreasing y values. So let's think about what it would mean to have positive divergence in terms of x and y coordinates. We know that as we move to the right, we want the vector field to point more to the right. That means that when we increase the value of x, we want the x value of our vector field to increase. The x value of our vector field is given by p, and we want p to increase when we increase the value of x. Well, how p changes based on how x changes is the partial derivative of that function p with respect to x. So we want the partial of p with respect to x to be positive when we have positive divergence. That way, when we increase the x value, we increase the x output of our vector field. We can do the same thing in the y direction. As we move up, or in the positive y direction, we also want our vector field to point more in the positive y direction. So the partial derivative of our y component q with respect to y also needs to be positive for positive divergence. We put these together by adding the two values and p sub x plus q sub y is the formula for divergence in two dimensions. When we look at the three-dimensional case, it's going to be very similar. For three-dimensional divergence, we're looking at a vector field that has x, y, and z components, so we'll add a z component r, and we want to add on to the first two terms that we have here, r sub z. So it's the exact same thing where we take the partial derivative of the z component with respect to z, and we want that to be positive so that our vector field points away from the point as we move away from it. There's also a nice way to remember this formula in terms of something called the nabla dotted with our vector field f. Now nabla, which is also called del, is the vector of partial derivatives. So in three dimensions, that would be the partial with respect to x, partial with respect to y, and partial with respect to z. So these are derivatives. And we take the dot product of that with our vector field p, q, r. Now this isn't an actual dot product because partial derivatives aren't things that you can actually put into a vector. But if we do this dot product out, we'll get the same formula p sub x plus q sub y plus r sub z that we want here. The reason that this works is that the dot product measures how much two vectors are parallel, and when we're looking at divergence, we want the vector field to increase parallel to the direction of movement. So let's look at one example of how to calculate the divergence using this formula. We'll do the divergence of this vector field given by 2xy, x squared plus sine z, and x e to the z squared plus y. We can use this formula for del dotted with the vector field. So I've just taken this formula right here and plugged in our pqr from the vector field. Now we want to do this dot product. So first of all, we're going to do the partial derivative with respect to x of 2xy. Well, that's just going to give us 2y. For the y component, we want the partial with respect to y of x squared plus sine z. Well, there are no y's in here, so that's essentially a constant with respect to y, which means that the partial is going to be 0. Finally, we have the partial with respect to z of x times e to the z squared plus y. 
x and y are constants in this case. So we're going to get plus, by the chain rule, we'll do 2xz e to the z squared plus y. And that is the divergence of this three-dimensional vector field. So that's the meaning of divergence. The formula for divergence measures the closed line or surface integral, talking about the component of a vector field in the direction of the normal vector. And because the normal vector to a circle always points parallel to its radius, that's the same thing as talking about how much f diverges away from the point as we move in each direction. And we can remember the formula using this dot product.